Greetings to my viewers. In this video I'm going to talk about a hugely underrated Olympus lens. This is the 12 to 200 zoom lens. In full frame equivalent it is 24 to 200. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I became aware of that, how I acquired it, what I did with it and what are my impressions about this lens. When digital photography started becoming very, very widespread, that was the early 2000s, uh, many of us looked at the large DSLR cameras as something very expensive and very heavy. So, including myself, a lot of us turned to the bridge cameras, which were developing very quickly. Uh, I, for example, used uh, Canon SX10, then 30, 40, and finally 60, which could have a 60 times uh, telezoom uh, reach. And that was really fantastic, but of course, with the very tiny sensor, which was in these bridge cameras, of course, uh, set certain limitations. And I started orientating myself towards uh, uh, interchangeable lens digital cameras, especially when the Mills cameras came onto the market. So I bought my first uh, Panasonic, Panasonic G7 in uh, 2017, then a G80 uh, 2019, then I moved up to the G9 and finally presently I have an Olympus OM-1 which I bought last fall. Uh, well, coming back to the original point, the bridge cameras made us extremely comfortable and lazy with their huge uh, telephoto uh, capabilities and coming back to interchangeable lens cameras of course that seemed to be a big problem what sort of uh, telephoto especially if you wanted to do uh, nature photography as well so i tried various lenses and of course when i go for real nature photography shooting i use my leica panasonic 100 to 400 pretty good quality camera but for general travel, what sort of objective would be the most comfortable? And in uh, 2019, a uh, sensational news came that Olympus created a uh, 12 to 200, that is 24 to 400 uh, zoom lens, which would be the ideal travel camera. And this is what the early reviews were all emphasizing, that if you travel, especially if you travel by airplane and you are severely limited with the weight then such a lens is absolutely ideal because it's small it is quite light and when you open it even in the largest uh, telephoto uh, zooming it's not so terribly big I looked at this lens in uh, 2019 and uh, at first I thought that I cannot afford it, it seemed to be very expensive, I already had a range of lenses. Uh, the lens is still available, in Hungary it costs about 400,000, 470, 380 uh, and uh, that's quite a lot of money for a lens in the Micro Four Third system. But if we compare it to its predecessor, which was also sensational, and up to today a lot of good praises are given to the Olympus Pro 12 to 100 telephoto lens, uh, all of a sudden this has a double uh, telephoto capability. Well, obviously not without the cost. So the initial reviews started emphasizing that it's not so sharp in the corners, it's too soft, uh, minor problems for a real pro. But still, 
everybody acknowledged that for a, travel, a general purpose travel zoom, this is pretty good. Uh, finally, I managed to find a very good uh, second hand offer a year ago. It was in the spring of uh, 2021. Because I was facing a number of travels, air travels, and I thought that this could be a very good option. I went first to Gdańsk, Poland from Hungary, and a week later to Corsica. On both occasions uh, I was involved, either me or my wife were involved in conferences, so it's kind of conference travel, uh, budget flight, uh, small hotels, uh, a lot of travel, changing planes, etc. etc. And I decided to buy this lens. After the first tries, I became convinced that it will be pretty good for me. Although at that time I didn't have my OM1, I bought it for the G9, the Panasonic G9, which uh, I had with the 12 to 60 Leica lens. But I thought that it will be much more comfortable and much more exciting to have such travel zoom. And since I went to uh, mostly to cities and I was planning to do architectural photos, I also took with me the uh, Panasonic 7 to 14 ultra wide objective. And this combo proved to be an absolutely ideal combination. Now let's have a look at this lens. It's actually pretty simple. There is no special gear on it. It doesn't even have um, IBIS, um, no, not IBIS, sorry, but uh, stabilization, uh, objective stabilization. But since all my cameras are have IBIS and pretty good stabilization in the camera body, it didn't bother me too much. And actually, I thought that it's even better because it will be more compatible with a Lumix camera. Uh, Practically, we don't have anything special on this lens. Uh, basically the zoom and the manual focus ring, and that's all. But I would like to emphasize already now that the focus, the zoom ring is extremely smooth. And I've had a lot of troubles with other lenses except this Leica, which I've just shown because when I do make uh, videos, because of the hard turning zoom rings, uh, the video jerks and not with this one. So that's one great plus. It has a 72 millimeter uh, thread, so I can attach various uh, filters or whatever I want to that. And it also comes with a very comfortable, easy going um, lens hood. When we look at the aperture, of course, this is not a very fast lens. At 12 millimeter, this is 3.5 and at 200 millimeter, it's 6.3. So the question is whether you can make good compromises and uh, can you use it in low light or not? My experience is that both the G9 and the, especially the OM1 now, among uh, Micro Four Thirds cameras are pretty good for low light. And uh, together with the very, very strong IBIS in both camera bodies, I could easily photograph even within churches, uh, handheld pictures or uh, evening pictures with uh, city lights as you will see in a few minutes. Uh, basically, uh, this is what I can summarize about this lens. And once again, I introduce my everyday lenses. I have a couple of other lenses as well, but these are the most important ones. If I just want, take, uh, want to take one lens not too heavy and very good quality with low light capabilities, I take the 12 to 60. Uh, zoom lens by Leica because at 12 it's 2.8. It's still not the fastest, but that's uh, pretty good. But for real travel, I will change this lens and put on the Olympus 12 to 200, and I do the same with the OM1, maybe even more. And here is my practically almost super zoom telephoto camera. 
and if it's necessary I change for the 7 to 14 in cityscapes for architectural or inside uh, photography this is a, a a constant for aperture 4 which is usable pretty well and when I go to uh, on a nature photography trip then obviously I take the big one which is still very small compared with any other full-frame lenses of similar capabilities and either the Leica or the Olympus um, I think it's better to talk about with pictures and show what sort of results I've had with lens. This year uh, and last fall I had several more trips when I primarily used this Olympus lens. I was in the mountains of Hungary uh, last fall and this year in April I went to Bohemia uh, also with a little trip to Germany. It was in northern western Bohemia and uh, later on I went to Brno in Czechia again and two weeks ago I was in uh, Innsbruck in Austria and on all these trips this lens served pretty well so let me show you some examples uh, arranging the pictures uh, in kind of thematic groups uh, general cityscapes low light pictures inside churches and I would also like to show a number of macro photographs because actually this is pretty good for macro um, photography the minimum distance you can use it I tried to find it and I haven't done it before but it's something like 20 centimeters at 12 and not much more with the full telephoto range so actually you can have quite nice bokeh and uh, pretty uh, convincing macros with the maximum telephoto uh, capability of this lens all the pictures which I'm going to show you will be edited pictures for the following reason uh, first of all when somebody looks at photographs hardly pixel peeps and even less you are looking at raw pictures I always shoot on raw and then I edit them sometimes in a combination of various programs uh, my first step is always uh, DxO's photo lab and uh, the photo lab result either in JPEG or in TIFF depending on how delicate the picture is and with nature photography bird photography I primarily uh, save from photo lab in TIFF but if it's just a general travel photography I'm happy with the JPEG which I then further edit either in Photoshop in combination with the Nick collection or with um, Luminar Neo which uh, actually I'm getting to like more and more except for the raw processing I still think that DxO's raw processing is much better than, uh, than um, Luminar Neo from time to time I'm also using uh, gigapixel, Topaz is gigapixel especially with nature photography when there is a strong crop so practically that's my workflow and uh, here are the results thank you very much for your attention and please keep with my channel subscribe to that and if you like this then don't hesitate to give a thumb up bye bye